Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. We're continuing with Chapter 3. And in this video, uh, we'll look at Section 5.2 on a fundamental principle of counting. In this section, we'll talk about the number of elements in a set A, the inclusion-exclusion principle, Venn diagrams, and finally, De Morgan's laws. If S is any set, we will denote the number of elements in S by writing N parentheses S or N of S. For example, if S is the set whose elements are 1, 7, and 11, then N of S is equal to 3. If S is the empty set, then n of s is equal to zero because the empty set contains no elements. And that brings us to the inclusion exclusion principle. Let s and t be sets, then the number of elements in s union t is equal to the number of elements in s plus the number of elements in t minus the number of elements in the intersection of S and T. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit in the examples about why that is. For example, in the year 2000, Executive Magazine surveyed the presidents of the 500 largest corporations in the US. Of these 500 people, 310 had degrees of any sort in business, 238 had undergraduate degrees in business, and 184 had graduate degrees in business. How many presidents had both undergraduate and graduate degrees in business? So if we let S be the set of all presidents with an undergraduate degree in business and T be the set of presidents with a graduate degree in business, then the set S union T is the set of all presidents with degrees of any sort in business. And the intersection of S and T is the set of all presidents with both undergraduate and graduate degrees in business. So since the number of elements in S is 238 and the number of elements in T is 184, and finally, the number of elements in S union T is 310. We can use the inclusion exclusion formula to solve for the number of elements in S intersect T by substituting these three values uh, into the appropriate places in the formula and then solving for the number of elements in S intersect T, which comes out to be 112. In the next section, I'll show you another way to do this problem. Uh, and that will be using a Venn diagram. I don't believe we're gonna do that problem in this section though. I think we do it in the next section. A Venn diagram is a drawing that represents sets geometrically. To construct a Venn diagram, draw a rectangle and view its points as the elements of U. Then draw a circle inside the rectangle for each set. These circles should overlap. View the points inside the circles as elements of each set. All right, so in this example, we will draw a Venn diagram with three sets called R, S, and T. And then we'll shade the areas that represent R intersect S intersect T are union S, union T, and finally the intersection of S, R complement, and T complement. All right, so the, uh, the shaded region here represents R intersect S intersect T. So these are the points that are inside all three circles. Here uh, you see the set R union S union T, these would be all the points that are inside at least one of the circles. Um, don't pay any attention to the different colors. They don't really mean anything in this problem. Basically uh, any region that is any color <laughs> belongs to R union S union T. 
And then finally, uh, the region here in green represents S intersect R complement intersect T complement. So the, these would be all of those points that are in S, let's say that, that a different way, that belong to S, that do not belong to R, and do not belong to T. So notice how the green region is inside the circle for S, but is outside both of the circles for R and T. And that brings us to De Morgan's laws, which state that if S and T are sets, then the complement of S union T is equal to the intersection of S complement and T complement. And the complement of S intersect T is equal to the union of S complement and T complement. Right, in this example, we will verify that the complement of S union T is equal to the intersection of S complement and T complement using Venn diagrams. All right, so here's the Venn diagram for S union T. It is everything that is not white, all right? Everything that's in at least one of the circles. And so what you see here in green is what belongs to the complement of S union T. All right, so now we're trying to show that this set is equal to the intersection of S complement and T complement. So now let's start looking at this set. Here is S complement. It's everything that is not in white, everything that is outside set S. Here is T complement. It's everything again that is not white, everything outside of T. So where do those two sets overlap? they overlap outside both of the circles, right? If you look at these two diagrams, the only area that got shaded both times was the area that's outside both of the circles. So that's what's in the intersection. And remember that that is exactly the same picture that we got when we looked at the complement of S union T. So that shows that uh, this version of De Morgan's law is true using Venn diagrams. All right, and now I'm really excited because I get to tell you about the time that I used Morgan's Law in my real life. This was so exciting. All right, so suppose I give extra credit to students who get 100% scores in all three sections of say chapter seven. If you are a student in my class, this might sound familiar. So I'm going to let set A be the students who got hundreds on section 7.1 homework. B will be the set of students who got hundreds on 7.2 homework. And C will be the set of students who got hundreds on 7.3 homework. So what is the set containing the students who get the extra credit? All right, sorry about the bird shrieking in the background. I just gave them some food, so hopefully now they'll be quiet. So the set containing the students who get the extra credit would be the intersection of sets A, B, and C. So here's the problem that I had when I first started using the online homework program that I currently use. That online homework program will not give me the intersection of sets of students, it will only give me the union. So in other words, I can ask that online homework program to give me a list of students who got hundreds on 7.1, students who got hundreds on 7.2, students who got hundreds on 7.3, but it's going to tell me all the students who got 100 on any one of those assignments, at least one of them. So it only gives me the union. So for probably a couple of years, it seems like, or maybe it was only about a year, I used to make that list and I would print it out and then I would take a highlighter and because uh, it would show me which specific sections they got hundreds on. And so I would just highlight the names of students who got hundreds on all three of them. 
And then one day I had an idea. I said, wait a minute. Let's ask the program for the names of students who did not get 100 on 7.1. So that would be a complement who didn't get 100 on 7.2, which would be B complement. And then finally, who didn't get 100 on 7.3, that would be C complement. So if I put those three parameters into my program, it's going to give me a list of all the students who belong to set A complement union, B complement union, C complement. By De Morgan's law, that is the same thing as the complement of A intersect B intersect C. And now I have the second best thing to the list that I really wanted. I have a list of the students who don't get the extra credit. Uh, and that works almost as well. And that's the system I've been using for probably about 10 years now as I record this video. So that was a really exciting day. It's not every day that you think of a way to use De Morgan's Law in your real life, but that's what happened. All right, so to summarize this section, the inclusion exclusion principle says that the number of elements in the union of two sets is the sum of the number of elements in each set minus the number of elements in their intersection. Let me talk for just a brief minute about why that is. The reason that you have to subtract the number of elements in the intersection is because if you don't, then you have double counted them, okay? So take, for example, uh, set A is uh, students who are freshmen, and set B is students who are in the math club. So if I want to count how many students are either freshmen or in the math club, I could start by counting the number of students who are freshmen, and then count the number of students who are in the math club. Now, if I happen to have any freshmen in the math club, those students will get counted twice. And that's why you have to subtract the number of students in the, or the number of elements in the intersection. Um, if you count them twice to begin with, and then you subtract them once, then in the end, you have only counted them once. All right, and then a Venn diagram consists of a rectangle containing overlapping circles and is used to depict relationships among sets. The rectangle represents the universal set and the circles represent subsets of the universal set. And then De Morgan's laws state that the complement of the union of two sets is the intersection of their complements and also that the complement of the intersection of two sets is the union of their complements. And that's gonna take care of section 5.2. We'll see you next time.